that you've let in 60 million people already, they're here, and then you say, and we want a border solution now. They are already here. It has already happened, and now you're claiming to say you want to solve it? They're already here. They're already here. Like, 16 million illegals are already here. Oh my God, Kelly. Like, bro, get out of here. All right, we are ready for another debate. And this one is, who is this? Uh, the Jubilee Project or or the Jubilee, or just Jubilee. That's what it's called. Um, I, I really like this channel because they put a lot of pretty interesting debates, conversations. Uh, some regular folks, some people are like influencers, YouTubers or whatever like that. But for this one here is Trump versus Harris voters and to me, it's, it's really essential to make sure that we are engaging in the simple surface level uh, uh, conversations that regular people have, including myself. Like, you know, sometimes it is good to get down into the details, the nitty gritty of a conversation. But we have to understand regular folks who are not really politically um, inclined uh, they just see whatever is kind of flashing on the TV at that moment. For the most part, they're just really basic understanding when it comes to politics, foreign or domestic. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's really simple. So sometimes I think a lot of people, including myself, get so caught up in the details, especially when you're having regular conversations with people. They don't care about the details. They just kind of want that service level conversation. So I think... Uh, the, the debate we're going to watch and, you know, I, I picked out three important uh, conversations or questions that they engage with. And, you know, of course, if you want to see the whole conversation, go to the channel, see the whole entire uh, debate. But, you know, we're just going to kind of go over at least the three main, you know, or at least interesting conversations. So this first one, uh, I don't got a label, so we're just going to jump right into it. So. is no matter what my candidate does i will still vote for them Ooh, that's a dangerous question ay, ay, ay. Hey, buddy. <laughs> i mean I, i'd be lying if i said if trump came out in a crowd and just started you know yelling at people calling them stupid or like did something crazy that i wouldn't still vote for him it would have to be like walk out in Times Square, shoot someone in the face kind of thing. Like, it would have to be something outrageous for me to not vote for him right now, and that is only because these are the only two choices I have, which sucks for us as American people. We should have a lot more choice in this. We should have had more debates. We should have had more people involved in the debates. It would just, it would take a lot for me not to vote for him just because I care so much about securing our, our country and my right to own firearms. All right, first off, it's, it's weird how low, like l lower, like right here, like even lower. I wish the camera could see how low I'm going. It's it's so weird how the standards have dropped so much. Donald Trump has to shoot somebody in the face for you to be like, do I really want to vote for this? Like, why? Why are we lowering? Why are we allowing these politicians to lower our standards? I don't know, but that's. Okay, let's, we got so, a lot to do. For go. me, we know Kamala's character. And so even thinking if she does the worst thing ever, would I still vote for her? Yeah, because I know the worst thing that she could do wouldn't even be the best thing that Trump does, right? Like she, the, the, the bars are very different. Um, in addition to that, of course I'm gonna vote for her because Trump is, is such a terrible alternative. I'm afraid to see what our country would look like. I, I'm, I'm voting for Kamala for pragmatic reasons. January 6th made Trump ineligible in my eyes. He's a traitor. He disrupted 200 years of peaceful transfer of power for his own selfish reasons that he now admits that he lost by a whisker, sarcastically, according to him. Let's bring in our district. So once again, I, I understand, you know, Kamala Harris is night and day when it comes to Trump. I get that. But once again, if you have to measure your candidate to Trump and say, oh, look at Trump. At least my candidate isn't like that. Like you already kind of awkwardly look weird in this conversation, because once again, if we if we're allowing Trump to be the measure, we already lost. 
And just like old boy said, like, we should have other options. We should have other people in a debate. But thanks to the Democrats and Republicans, they set up the system to where people like Jill Stein or, or any independent candidate can't, can't even really get to the debate stage. You know what I'm saying? They already rigged the system. So we're sitting here crying about we, we need more options, but we're participating in the two party system that's only allowing the two parties to be options. You, you see how we're kind of just hamsters in the wheel? Like, man, I wish we had more wheels, but like we need to get off the wheel. Then maybe we'll be provided other wheels. But if we're continuing to, to play in the system, they have no reason to make any changes, right? Because they don't care about what you got to say. You know what I'm saying? So pretty simple. Your ears. I'll go first again, like one of these two people are getting in uh, right now. My choice is Kamala Harris. That doesn't mean that anything that she does is going to keep that support. Um, my biggest issue right now mm -hmm. is the genocide going on in Gaza, propagated by both the Trump administration and the Biden administration. You could say that prior to October 7th, there was peace going on between Israel and Gaza, as I've heard a lot of Trump supporters say. That's just factually inaccurate, especially with the Abraham Accords, especially with moving the embassy to Jerusalem. These are things that I'm very critical of Trump on, and I'm still having trouble announcing my support for Kamala Harris. It was a big moral decision to even come on the show in support of her, um, but that's because I don't support her again. I think that Donald Trump is gonna be somebody that's far worse for the country than she will be. So um, did you know that this is the lowest civilian to uh, combatant death rate of any war in recent history? Did you know that? Are we, is so this gonna be a Gaza were, talk? If, okay, what, and, and she's an interesting character. What does it have to do with like the question at hand? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's it's like, okay, what are you talking about? I mean, I know what you're saying, but like, what does it have to do with in context of what we're talking about? And that's what a lot of like these Trump supporters and probably some Democrats, but mainly the conversations I have with a lot of Republicans, conservatives is when you engage in a topic that they can't really handle, they'll divert to something else. And it's like, no, we we, we were talking about this. What what are you talking about? Why why are you switching the subject? Because they know they can't engage with the topic at hand because they're going to look stupid. So that's her well, ready well, to I'm go responding on I'm so to ready. that. <laughs> because I can't just let your word genocide go because it's not a genocide. If it was okay. a genocide, well, it would have ended think, two days later and it would have been fine. Well, Everyone Sheila, would be dead. We'll, we'll have so to it's not a it genocide. That, though, just yeah, for that's fine. Sake. Unfortunately, that's not the definition of a genocide is like, the time range like if it's two days or less that that continues or or that counts as a genocide like when it comes to the holocaust how long how long of a period was that would you not consider that a genocide or at least a really big attempt to genocide a group of people trust me that was more than two days so it's it's like you you you're trying to play with these words and you're showing your ass you you showing how much of an ass you are because that made no sense at all. But once again, she can't engage with the topic at hand. No matter what my candidate does, I'll still vote for them. Answer the question. Just take. But I want to hear. I'm um, going back to the prompt. You came in because you disagreed. There's yeah. You wouldn't vote for Trump unconditionally. No, no, of course. I mean, I think as a moral human being that comes from a place of love with strong core values, I can't just give anyone, you know, carte blanche that no matter what you do, you're going to have my love and support. But from, you know, barring anything uh, crazy like <laughs> the situation that Joe mentioned, um, you know, it's pretty much 100%. And actually, I am part of Jewish Voices for Trump, and I really appreciate all of the things that he's done for the Jewish people and for the state of Israel as well. So the next prompt is Harris beat Trump in the. All right. So that's that's the first question. So we're going to go to the next one. Like I said, if you guys want to watch this whole thing, which I mean, this has 2.3 million. I'm pretty sure you have seen this, right? You know, what I'm saying? I, I know I'm late to the party, but it's fine. We here. Um, Ronald Reagan said that the United States was a sh shining city on a hill, right? That's the basis of your guys' philosophy. Are you, right? what, are you, what are you saying? I'm saying, saying I'm saying, I'm saying, they stop at that? I want to start out with saying that immigration was founded off of immigrants, slaves even, but and if people. we want to actually talk about it, right, 
we can all agree that something at the end of the day does need to be done about immigration, whether it means it becomes more humane, whether it means we have a better vetting process, whether it means any of those things. But what you guys are failing to acknowledge is that the bipartisan bill was presented and they voted no, strictly, genuinely, because they didn't want to give Biden the W on that. That would be fine and all, like cool, whatever, but this isn't a game. This isn't like, you don't get to play with people's lives and where they live and what they're escaping from. Mm -hmm. You don't know what they're coming from. That ain't none of your business. Honestly, they don't owe you that. If they pass the paperwork and the test or whatever it is, they don't owe you explanation on why they came here. So I think whoa, whoa, how dare you, young black lady? How dare you tell these white folks that they need to mind their business? What Republican do you know that understands that they need to mind their business? I don't know what this is right here, but it's it's some sort of box your bubble. OK, and it seems like a lot of Republicans, I don't want to say all, but a lot of Republicans seem to not understand what mind your business mean. Well, you know, how, how did they get in the country? What are they fleeing from? Oh, what, what, what situations is happening in their country? Bro, worry about what's happening in your country and leave these folks alone. Nine times out of 10, I hate when the, when the, the, the media creates this narrative that millions of people are entering illegally and there's millions of people, immigrants that are entering legally or at least through the patches uh that they need to you know I, i'm not gonna pretend like i'm a Im immigration you know uh, professor but you can't just tell by looking at numbers how many people entered legally versus illegally just like the situation with springfield the narrative was there were illegal haitians just uh uh, uh just blowing up the city just overpopulating this this area and that's not the case they're legal through the terms that they entered through the situations that's going on in haiti they're legal they're able to work they're able to pay taxes they're able to contribute to their area to their city to their state essentially to all of our economics they're able to do that so what's the problem you know what i'm saying but you, you can't tell Republicans to mind their business because that's against their religion. I think it's really funny when Democrats, Kamala Harris supporters bring this up because when people bring it up, they bring it up as it's like big gotcha, like, oh my gosh. And, and part, you know, you guys are right. Like, okay, why would Republicans, you know, go back on this? So I do understand that part. But my question is why? No, 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 no. Don't say but. Answer that. You saying but doesn't give you like a pass to not wrestle with that situation. Why did the Republicans say no to that, um, to, to adding more uh, uh, border security? And I'm pretty sure it was other things, but why did they say no? Let's figure that out. There's no but, 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 I mean, I understand. If you understood, you'd be like, why is my Republican Party, who's, who's supposed to be the champions of uh, stronger immigration uh, reform, that's that's like 80 percent of that party's messaging is immigration if it wasn't for immigration they wouldn't have a party so why wouldn't they not pass that bill R regardless of who's presenting the bill if that's what you're really concerned about don't worry i'll wait don't hey Oh, okay, got you. You you ain't got to an answer. Okay. I didn't take them to election year, a few months or six months before the election, I believe. I believe it was six months before the election. Now they want to put forth this bill. Definitely if the Biden administration <laughs> and now Kamala Harris wants to be president, I think it's completely legitimate to say, you were in office since 2021, Biden and Kamala. That's mm -hmm. when they came in office. You waited until 2024 to put together this Republican bill. And might I just add, since Democrats are moving on the right, on immigration does it mean that us trump supporters were right all along if you want to all right first off oh i hate this man this is one thing that i hate about this whole red game blue game type of situation no party owns any ideas you know what i'm saying and, and i mean it, it can get a little deeper but on a surface level i hate when republicans say that we're the party of family values do you 
know that a lot of Democratic voters have a lot of conservative um, personal ideologies like myself, man and man and wife, get married, have kids, work a job, take care of your family, pro-life. Don't you know a lot of the black community is like that? But a lot of black folks are not Republican, but we have a lot of conservative values, but Democrat socially. Does that make sense? I know it does. Just just wrap it. Hey, rewind this if you need to, because it makes sense. So to answer his question, politics is a game, unfortunately. So regardless if the Democratic Party decided to, to which I think he's going to hit on, um, if they propose to bill 10 days after they got into office or 10 days before they leave office, this, the question is, who's going to vote yes? And why didn't people vote yes? That's the question. We already know politics is a game. It's it's a whole, ch which it shouldn't be, because like, like she said, you're playing with people's lives here. So it shouldn't be a game, but unfortunately it is. But when that bill hits the table and you have a, an uh, option to say yay or nay, why are you saying nay? That's the question. I want to talk about when we were in office, then why is it when Trump was in office in his first year, his first two years in office, when he had a Republican Congress and a Republican Senate, and he had the, been raging about the immigration bill, and Mexico was going to pay for the wall, remember? When did, why didn't he do it? The you only legislation... Well, uh, what happened to Mexico? Pay hey, 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 we, we don't have even have to answer that. that he passed was a huge exactly. tax cut for billionaires. And he made sure that um, people with uh, mental illnesses could and still get guns. And when he was presented with those the Those are talk, literally the was... only two legislators. Just... All right, all right. I got to cut you off. Now? Let's hear from okay. Sheila. So um, imagine um, the level of gaslighting that you've let in 60 million people already, they're here, and then you say, and we want a border solution now. They are already here. It has already happened, and now you're claiming to say you want to solve it? They're already here. <laughs> they're already here. Like, 16 million illegals are already here. Oh my God, Kelly. Like, bro, get out of here. How is it affecting you? I will I tell you, I am answer. a taxpayer, mm -hmm. and my taxpayer dollars, number one, are going to people who are not paying taxes and are not citizens and came here illegally. Really? Okay, when you come... Um, isn't also your tax money going to Israel, who already has free health care? Uh, a lot of their institutions, like education, uh, far precedes ours, but we're giving them money for what? Oh, yeah, that's right. So when it's people that you don't like or you don't know or you don't understand or you don't care about, it's like, why is my taxpayer money going to these people? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. But when it goes to causes that you do support with a whole country that already has their own economics, already probably in some areas in a better situation than we are, hence health care, why, why are we giving them money? Hey, hey, you you ain't got an answer right now. Go ahead, take your time, Google some things, and then get back to me. I'm here illegally. You have performed a crime. Okay, that's number one. Number two, I am a physician. I work at the county hospital. These people come literally with maps to come get free health care from the county hospital. They will walk across the border with a map to come get their health care and health services. Here, they have not contributed into that health care system with their taxes. Why does someone have to taxes. contribute? Wait, you guys are fine care. I well, it's, it's not, it's not a disagreement of contributing. It's right. not a disagreement of political resources. beliefs. It's a disagreement <laughs> of your morality. There are, that no. is okay. a disagreement of your morality. Not a disagreement of questioning my morality. I'm yeah. questioning not you. Question okay. my morality. Time out. Time out. <laughs> She said, hey, I'm questioning it. She gave her the, 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 the look up. You know what I'm saying? Okay. First off, like I said, a lot of these immigrants that do come over do come over legally. Like I said, in, in, in uh, Springfield. And I, I don't keep a map of where all these legal immig immigrants go. And I'm pretty sure you don't. But if we can assume that some of them do come illegally, which they're not going to get 
good paying jobs. They might find a job where they get paid under the table, but trust me, you ain't gonna make it. All right. Um, and and and, and these uh, jobs that do pay illegal immigrants, they're paying them at the the bare minimum. The bare you can't even live off of. So let's let's not act like you know these companies are paying them thousands upon thousands of dollars. They're not. Um, but the ones that do come legally can get legal jobs, can get legal health care. What's wrong with that? Because nine times out of 10, they just want to work. They just want to work and provide for their families and just live life. Nine times out of 10. So w with this whole painting 16 million illegals just want to get here and get free health care and this like, hey, there's a lot of areas where our taxpayer money if we really knew where it was going i'm pretty sure immigrants is going to be the bottom of our list trust me it's going to be the bottom of my list at least yeah i mean time out we cannot include parts where you're yelling over people your points will not be yelling. okay there's a lot of overlap gotcha. we're going to end this part <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I just wanted to make three points. Uh, the prompt was, you know, agreeing with whether criminals and folks like that were led into the country. All right, you all are identifying resource issues, right? And so it's one thing to talk about the folks that are being led in the country and the types and the backgrounds or whatnot. It's another thing to talk about the resources, right? And so to your point where you're saying, you know, the, you know, the school was taken over, et cetera, right? That's a valid point, and I think that we have to, you know, make sure we have an immigration bill in place that allows mm -hmm. for a pathway. And so whether it was the last nine days of an administration or the first nine days of the administration, if there's a bill on the table mm -hmm. that adds those resources to, to, to make sure our border is <laughs> secure and make sure we have 1,500 more border personnel. Bro, <coughs> I'm sorry, to, to but it's hard to take you serious, bro. Like, like, I know you, you're probably a real smart dude. You, you know some, you have to know something something you you gotta be extremely passionate about politics if you're black and you're a republican you just don't wake up and be like hey i just want to be a republican like that doesn't happen so you you have to know something right so i'm gonna give you that but you look like a damn fool i mean i i'm not one to judge you know what i'm saying i i, I still wear do-rags you know what i'm saying but bro it's it's hard for me if i was sitting across from you to not laugh all right because you you look like a damn fool come on now to make sure our border is secure <laughs> and make sure we have 1,500 more border personnel on the border, then why would that not be the thing that at least solves the issue of uh, of securing our border, right? We can talk about the resources and how we're going to do that, right, and how we're going to make sure we take care of people that, that are here and if we're going to let more people in, right, how we're going to take care of those folks. But also, this administration isn't the first time where millions of illegal people crossed over the border. Mm -hmm. It's happened since the beginning of America, and it's continuing to happen because when there's an opportunity to pass something that will work no one wants to do it because bars. it becomes political instead of actually solving an issue bars 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 and mo bars i need like a little sound thing that says bars or something like that but she's spitting facts this is i i hate when people try to paint these pictures to where only under democratic administrations illegals cross the border it happens under everybody's administration some more than others Unfortunately, I mean, uh, uh, Barack Obama has been coined uh, deporter in chief or something like that. He deported millions. I mean, just on a basic surface level, wouldn't Republican voters be happy for that? Maybe, you know what I'm saying? And I swear to you, I own everything. If Kamala Harris was presented a bill that Democrats and Republicans put together uh, for free health care or increasing uh, the minimum wage to like 18, 20 bucks or uh, free education, something impactful, okay, that's important to me, you know, wages. And she said no, or she uh, coursed the Democratic Party to say no because they don't want the Republicans to get that victory. I promise you, bro. I would never, ever in my lifetime vote for another Democrat. Ever, 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 ever. Let that be the case. Because I don't care who gets the dub. I just want me and my people, my fellow Americans, to get what they deserve. And that's more pay. Bottom line. So if 
you really care about immigration, which I don't think a lot of people do. I think it's a lot of, you know, bottled up hate for other people that don't look like them. But let's say you do care and you realize that Trump coursed a lot of Republicans to say no to the bill because he doesn't want the Democratic Party to get a dub on that. Why aren't you mad? Why aren't you mad? I don't know. Hey, it, it may not be as as a big issue as some people think it is. Like I said, I think it's an underlining issue. I have something just to bounce off of that. You and clear. her are both correct with everything that you both said, and I completely agree. The, the issue is... It's like opening the door, letting a bunch of people in, then shutting it and going, hey, guys, we don't have enough resources for this. Where do we get the money to do it? And we're all just supposed to be taxed to all hell until everything gets paid for. And that's my biggest issue as like, I'm not making millions of dollars every day. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not a millionaire. I do private security contracting and I work for the rich people, you know, and I go in with MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, all these news agencies to these protests where all these issues are, are happening and nothing's being, being done. Anything that gets shown uh, that could be crazy or wild to see on the news, there certain news agencies aren't going to show you. So if I'm seeing this stuff in person and then I start seeing everything else online on YouTube, Fox News, whatever, CNN, doesn't matter. I, I'm all I'm seeing is what they're showing me because I can't just go to every single state, you know, and, and go to the border. But I'm seeing actual Venezuelans, actual uh, Haitian people, actual Somalians over uh, in Greeley, Colorado, taking over every single job and they're getting hired through these temp agencies. OK, OK, Jesus Christ. All right. First off. Hold on. All right. You see that? Hey. I'm from Colorado, born and raised on the play playgrounds where I spent most of my days, all right? I lived in Greeley for six years, all right? When he said this, I I rolled my eyes. I'm, I'm a man, okay? Alpha. Men don't roll their eyes. But when I heard him say that, my eyes rolled like, oh, dear Lord Jesus. No, he did not. I lived in Gre uh, Greeley for about five, six years. That ain't happening. Ain't no Venezuelans, ain't no, if they're able to get a temp job, which you have to show documentation that you can work, that you're here legally, you can pay taxes, yada, 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 all that, you know, all that fun stuff. If they're applying for temp jobs and they get hired, what does that have to do with you? Just like the young lady said, if they're here here legally mind your damn business maybe you need to worry figure out and worry about how how come you didn't get the job and candidate a got the job maybe it's a you thing okay second off temp jobs is is not a solution job okay i i, I don't work plenty of temp jobs it's not something you can just like make millions of dollars so let's let's not pretend like they're taking like these corporate you know multi-million dollar jobs just fresh fresh off the boat you know what i'm saying like it's not happening like that and thirdly mind your damn business you didn't say they did anything illegally except for they're taking the jobs well get your ass up and get a job it's plenty of work out there the problem is the quality of the job, the quality of the jobs, the pay of the jobs is what's hindering people. If we figure that out, we wouldn't need temp jobs and these uh, uh, jobs and corporations could actually pay a livable, uh, livable wage. Then you wouldn't be worried about immigrants, legal immigrants getting jobs. You wouldn't be worried about that because you, now you're making your money. To where you can pay your bills do the things you want to do and mind your damn business but no you want to point the finger at other people who need jobs and not point the finger at the corporations who's exploiting their workers and not paying the livable wage who oh okay scapegoat with with the immigrants okay i got you got you that 
won't allow them to okay. work full time, which is horrible for them specifically. That's not fair to anybody that came here thinking they're going to get a job and make American money. You know, like that's not fair to them. And it's not fair to the American people and the legal immigrants that came here that they can't get those jobs because now it's just taken over by temps. Our next prompt <laughs> is my candidate has contradicted let's, them. Let's, let's blame the immigrants, but not the temp industry. I mean, shouldn't, shouldn't we be pointing the fingers at them then instead of the people who, like I said, you can't get a real temp job if you're not legally able to work. I'm not talking about under the pay jobs. Those are not temp jobs. Temp jobs is where you still have to show documentation. You can work in America and you can get taxes taken out of your paychecks. So, so, so what are you talking about? You ain't talking about nothing. You ain't talking about nothing. You ain't talking about nothing. Okay. All right. So this question is. My internet's going. My candidate has uh, contradicted themselves, which, hey, who hasn't? All right. As a veteran, though? Yes, because it's. Raise is this, your hand. Is this gun regulation or is gun this regu like actually yeah. removing For, it from house? You, let's just say you're in support of some policy that would remove at least some guns from the possession of citizens. Raise your hand. As a veteran, though? Yes, because it's common sense. I, I was the point in Afghanistan. All right, let's have that. Our next the, the, the last question was about, um, or at least they led into, like, guns and restriction of AR-15s, and that was an interesting conversation. So, like I said, if you want to watch the whole thing, go ahead and watch it. It's prompt. Harris doesn't understand the economy as well as Trump. Will our agreeers step forward? <laughs> For me, at least, I'm obviously probably a lot younger than the people on the show, but for me, the way that I see the economy going from the four years that she's been in office with Biden to the four years that Trump has been in office. You know, I saw, at least with my family and the people around me, the, you know, economy prospered a lot more. You know, people my age have to um, wait on going to school because they have to work two jobs for three years to build that money back because the, the way the state and the economy was in, their parents had to use their college fund over these past four years to keep afloat. And we didn't see that with Trump. You know, people were getting wealthier and people were benefiting more. And I just don't feel that she's really seeing those issues. And you, you attribute. All right. Uh, OK. I mean, I, I never want to try and like downplay young folks. You know what I'm saying? I was young. Once upon a time, you know what I'm saying? I'm 37. I used to be 17. I used to be 27. You know, strong and, and, and just young and, and full of energy. You know what I'm saying? But, but I mean, she looked like she was 18, 19, 20. You know what I'm saying? Just just wet behind the ear still, you know? <laughs> you, you really don't have a lot of experience when it comes to understanding the economy under certain uh, uh, presidential candidates or parties. I'm only 37. I only really felt a few myself, especially when you're actually working and paying taxes and have to pay bills, like experience that you're so not your mom, not your dad, not your auntie, not your sister, not your brother, like you paying taxes and you paying bills. is a whole nother experience. Trust me. So, if you if you're young and you only have just one administration, two administrations under your belt, you need to read and get more knowledge of how it was before, like data, statistics, not people's feelings, not oh man, I felt like I was more prosperous under Nick. Your your feelings don't mean nothing. Look at the data. Look at the grand scope of things and not just your little tiny bubble. OK, and your bubble's only what, maybe eight years understanding Republican and Democrat uh, uh, control. And really, a lot of the economics don't even has nothing to do with who's the president, because a lot of these corporations, they know how to work around that. They're going to get their money in inflation, especially during covid. How many of these individual CEOs made billions of dollars, millions of top of millions during the crisis, pandi uh, uh, the, the COVID pandemic. So, so 
and that was under Trump. Elon made how much? Amazon made how much? In like days, they made billions of dollars. That has nothing to do with who's president. So it's it's a, it's a lot to it. It's not like a button they push like, oh, the economy is going to go to hell now. Like, 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 no, that's not how that works. But, you know, that's where regulations needs to come in play. But of course, Republicans don't don't they don't want regulations, but they complain about these companies doing what they want and how they want and when they want. Come on. Yes. Oh, this sweet too, God. that. You know, the, the Biden-Harris administration. Absolutely, because it's happened the past four years. My sister had to drop out of school due to the fact that we really, she, it was just to this, like, influx of money and inflation and everything and all the costs that it brings. There's just no, scholarships aren't scholarships anymore. Let's bring in our disagreement. Bro, scholarships ain't been scholarships before you were born. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, you 18, 19, 20, you, you got the shorts with little pockets hanging out. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, sweet God. Hey, it's it's okay, man. I know they're putting on a show. It's okay. It's okay. I disagree in the sense that we underestimate Kamala Harris way too much. And I think that the problem, you know, the question is like, you know, she doesn't understand. Oh, she fully understands. And I think that the problem is us underestimating because she understands that prices were lower with Trump. She understands that the grocery prices and food, going to McDonald's. You know, I went to McDonald's one day. The next day, I'm like, wait. A Big Mac wasn't this much under Trump. Like, what, what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. I think she understands these things and that the American people are suffering. And she understands it to the point to where, you know, she took one of his policies that no tax on tips. She does what she does. She tells people what they want to hear. Like the flattery language, the, oh, it's going to be so much and nice and the money we're going to get. Is it, isn't that politics in general? Isn't that like literally every politician? They, they kind of tell you what you want to hear. They, they tell you what tickles your little tiny ears. Isn't that like what they're supposed to do. I mean, I don't know. Give you, um, but she she knows exactly what she's doing. Okay, so some of the things that you guys touched on, um, on. just about the uh, state of the economy that was inherited when Kamala and Biden took over in office. I think we have to remember that they got a messed up economy. Like, at, like I think inflation went up 9.1% when he first oh, came into it? office. Yes. And that's because every four years, you know, you're gonna see the fallout from the next election, the next president. Does that make sense? Does it, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what they received was due to what Trump did. What Trump is getting praising for, what you guys are praising for, the Obama administration set the playing ground for that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, young lady, I done told you, you can't be throwing these facts to these Trump supporters because they don't know how to comprehend and, and do critical thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, as soon as Biden jumped into office, I mean, life was just hard, bro. But, like, you you mean the, 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 the terrible way that Trump handled the pandemic? And I don't blame Trump for the pandemic. If that happens, that happens, unfortunately. But there was plenty of ways, and a lot of smarter people than myself pointed out areas and situations, like, in real time, not... Monday quarterback and where you're looking 10 years behind like pointing out hey if you would have done this in x y and z and abc maybe we wouldn't be in the situation or at least as deep of a situation as we're in and he ignored everything for political points come on man jesus Christ. like that's how it works you only see the fallout from it once the next person is in office a lot of times because it takes a couple years sometimes to see the results. Real quick, I want to talk about the tax on tips because that's something that I don't agree with. Um, I didn't agree when Donald Trump proposed it and I didn't agree when Kamala Harris supported it. Okay. Su uh, supported it. Again, I'm somebody who's in favor of the working class, but tax taking taxes off tips is again, a, something that is sold as a very good idea, but it doesn't actually help the people that it's propagated to help. Beautiful. And that's mostly because people who work wages where they require tips don't even meet the threshold to actually pay federal income taxes. So a lot of the times, a lot Beautiful. of the times it's used to justify corporations or large businesses or even small businesses from exploiting workers that aren't being paid a living wage. They're actually relying on the generosity of customers that come in. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's again, it's a policy that's meant to justify oh, or man. make that system continue to happen. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, you're not going to. And, and, okay, maybe I shouldn't say not. 
because I know there's some intellectual individuals in the Republican Party. I, I, I refuse to think differ. But you're not going to see this kind of just surface level. He, he's not saying nothing deep. He ain't saying nothing like just downright, just like straight out of like the heavens. You know what I'm saying? He's saying something really simple. The whole tax thing, it's a, it's a sweet idea. Got you. Let's do that. But that's not going to solve these waitresses and, 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 and bus boys. Like that's not going to solve their underlying issue. And the underlying issue is they're not getting paid enough. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's pretty simple. So no matter what you do with the whole tips thing, they'll be thankful, but that's not going to solve anything important. I'm talking back on the Trump economy. I don't think that the Trump economy was necessarily bad. I wouldn't say that that's because of the actions of Donald Trump. Within 10 days of him being inaugurated, the right was so excited to announce that the Dow Jones Act increased. All of the economists across the country were praising the state of the economy. It's not because of somebody who just got inaugurated 10 days ago. It's because of the economy that Donald Trump inherited. And please mm -hmm. forgive me, but someone who's been bankrupted six times, Woo! bankrupted casinos. Oh. Do you know how inept you have to be to bankrupt a casino? It's literally the business model is, here, take my money. And he bankrupted multiple casinos, bankrupted the entirety of Atlantic City. Oh. Also, $25 million settled lawsuit for Trump University. Also, 34 felony charges convicted on fraud and can't do business in New York for three years. And you're going to <laughs> Tell me I'm going to trust this dude with some business. And, and, and this, the, the lady with the whole, you know, scarf thing, she she may mention, I, I don't know if she, she said it in, in this portion here, but she said, you know, America's like a company, you know, and, and the president has to be like a CEO and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, first off, you crazy if you think America needs to be ran like one of these corporations that only know how to exploit their workers and only job is to just be greedy like okay whatever but you're gonna leave it to a man that claimed bankrupt bankruptcy how many times <laughs> a casino <laughs> like like really that's the guy you're you're voting for that that's your champion huh oh man if that's your champion man we in trouble we in trouble. Can I just respond to your Everyone, point? I think Eric, earlier you brought yeah. up a really good point when you were talking about like students now not being able to afford to school and working, right? And I think that is a concern that whoever the president the president's going to be has to address. Right. But what I will say about the Biden administration is he's doing things to help my generation. We, for us, it was it wasn't a barrier to get to school. It's once we got our schooling, being able to now pay back the student loans. Right. And so like, Biden is answering that, right? And so I think she's VP to Biden. She understands those issues. I think I would trust her more. To, to, to figure out how we're going to support students that have to work all these jobs before they can even get to school. But she's paying attention. But at least we know that she was in an administration that paid attention to those concerns. Uh, and, and Trump hasn't. Okay, let's reset. Trump is more extreme. And Trump hasn't. Oh, that's simple. And Trump hasn't. Once again, guys, if you guys want to watch the whole video, go to the channel and go ahead and watch the video. I don't want to spend an hour just going through and then I'm going to be talking like an hour myself because I am a very boisterous, uh, opinionated individual. All right. So we will be here for like two and a half hours. All right. But anything that I said throughout the whole video, if you think I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments down below. And like always. Let's have that conversation.